All right, I'm speaking today with Dr. Dhruv Reyna. Thank you very much for speaking with me today, Dr. Reyna. Yep, it's a pleasure. Um, so can you explain what Cosmopolitan is with regards to science and how the local fits into that? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, basically, I mean, histories of science uh, of a certain genre tend to focus on science has produced within s certain contexts, and these contexts are supposed to be uh, very localized and expressions of particular cultural forms and practices. Uh, and uh, cosmopolitanism would reflect at one level a variety of influences which go on to make, uh, make scientific knowledge. Um, this can be reflected in several moments and processes. I'd like to see the making of scientific knowledge in terms of constituted through a diversity of influences, both of people, of cultures, of material uh, objects, like instruments and texts belonging to, you know, a variety of sources. So, therefore, the making of that knowledge itself is a reflection of this diversity of sources. Yeah. Okay, and so what kind of uh, struggles do researchers often find in trying to develop um, knowledge that can be understood in a global, on a global basis? Yeah, okay, I mean, you know, I mean, research, uh, researchers themselves are embedded within institutional contexts, and these institutional contexts often betray uh, national contexts as well, right? So, I mean, uh, syllab syllabi and curricula are then structured by uh, national imperatives of institutions. Uh, now, so what happens is that when a researcher is being trained, especially in the social sciences, these curricula then provide them the spectacles, provide them the source material, the, the readings, uh, through which then they look at other cultures. Now, nationalist historiography or uh, ethnocentric historiographies have been the plague of the study of, of science of, and, and of the histories of sciences. Um, and in a world which is increasingly globalized, uh, one has to look at science in ways uh, that um, sort of depart from this very local, these very local ethnocentric views uh, to look at the exchange of knowledges, not just over the past 200 years, but over centuries. And that reveals the diversity of sources and influences that go into the making of scientific knowledge. Yeah. And so what, are, what can you say are some of your goals with this Cosmopolitan and the local uh, project that you're involved in? Yeah, okay, you know, in, in a way, if you look at, at this entity called Global Science and you begin to unpack the entity Global Science, then what we have before us is a multiplicity of knowledge forms, uh, a multiculturalism of, 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 of science itself. Now, in order to study this, entity. I mean, one has to look at the interplay between uh, the cosmopolitan and the local. Where the local can itself also be cosmopolitan, but the local itself sort of reflects upon and transforms uh, what we consider to be uh, global science. Now, how do we go about pursuing this activity? Now, this can be done, this can be and must be done at several levels. The one is the purely cognitive, and at the cognitive I will say that we have to develop methodological tools, uh, different hermeneutic strategies to read the cosmopolitan in science, to recognize the cosmopolitan in science. Uh, this also requires a reform of the, the social theory of science, uh, revisioning the historiographies of science and the kinds of sources we are attuned to looking at, towards recognizing within the historical material what Stephen Shapen would have called invisible technicians, marginalized groups and peoples, their sources and influences within the mainstream uh, narratives of science. So this is something that can be enabled through uh, through our curricula, through our methodological uh, uh, protocols employed by historians and philosophers of science. So that's one part of it. This is the cognitive 
side of it. The other is the more logistic and institutional part. And this can be done, I believe, through the exchange of students between India, Singapore, China, Canada, uh, which would not just change the way people in Canada or anywhere else look at the within quotes non-West, but also as to how people in India and China or Singapore could look upon working in those national contexts, look upon the work which is going on in Canada and elsewhere. So what would be the exchange of students, but also more importantly to transform the curricula itself. So if somebody from Canada were to come to my university and lecture there for some time, it would certainly have an impact in the way uh, we would subsequently frame our, our own curricula. So through the exchange of students, through the exchange, uh, exchange of teaching programs, I think uh, these, these programs which are in some sense quite local in their focus and priorities could themselves become cosmopolitan. So the question is not, not just looking at cosmopolitan science but creating a more cosmopolitan culture for the undertaking of history and philosophy of science. Okay, well thank you very much for speaking with me today and I wish you the best of luck with the entire program. Thank you very much, it's been a pleasure talking to the faculty and students here. Thanks.